Hey everybody, welcome to Missouri Star Live. I am Misty Doan and I'm so happy to have you here on this wonderful Tuesday. Today is Liz's birthday, so happy birthday Liz. She is out of the Yay. office, but we hope she's having a great day. So Courtney is back this week uh, with helping us with questions back there and we've got our wonderful film crew here as well. Uh, so let's see where we have you guys tuning in from. We have Cindy from Coeur d'Alene, Suzanne from Ontario, uh, Drusilla from South Carolina, that's a fun name, and Amy from New Hampshire. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, we really appreciate you being here. Um, if you have any questions or anything along the way, be sure to comment, and Courtney will let us know so that I can hopefully answer those before the show is over. We've got a really fun project for you today. Um, it's a no-so project. If you saw the teaser, this is what we're going to be talking about. This cute little quilted uh, board from Artsy2. It's a wonderful company here in the U.S. And when I saw these products, I was like, I've got to show them. They're going to love this. It's a great way to make some decorations for your um, sewing room or as a gift. And we're all about gifty projects right now, gearing up for the holidays. So let me show you how we did this. And I also want to mention the fabric that I use for this is um, Backyard Blooms by Allison Harris for Wyndham. Really cute, um, kind of Americana colors, but just mo uh, got that like mint and turquoise thrown in there to just make it really cute and, and modern. I love it. Really fun line to work with. So let me show you this. I, I know I was reading through the comments when you guys saw this project and people are like, how is that no so? It looks quilted. It's got this great, amazing texture. So let me show you this product. Like I said, it's, um, they're called Artsy2 Quilt Boards and they are available on our website um, at Missouri Star Quilt Company. But let me just dig into this and show you how it works. Seam rippers are good for lots of things. <laughs> Indeed they are. <laughs> and including opening plastic. All right, so let's take this plastic off so you can see it exactly as it comes. And so you can see here, there's this great foam uh, that will actually be as the backing. You use it to cover the back side of this. I didn't put it on just because I wanna show you the whole step. But so this is to make a nice finished backing when you finish this project. There's also some instructions here and it also gives you um, a link to their website where they've put together some how-to videos. So if you have any other questions, you can also check that out. And that will be in all of your packages. And then you can see, this is the board that we're working with. And the design is actually laser cut on top of this. And when you, when you go and peel off one of your pattern pieces, let me just, actually, let's start in the middle here. It reveals this purple adhesive side. And so then this becomes your template to start making your project. So we're just gonna start by using this little piece. And we'll start on this one so I can show you that it really is simple. You can start on any of the shapes. You don't necessarily have to start in the middle and work your way out. Um, I started in different places in each step just to kind of really test that out and see if it made a difference. And I didn't find that it did. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, use this, like I said, as a pattern piece. And you do want to be aware when you get to these shapes that aren't the same if you flip them over, that you keep them um, right sides up if you're pinning them to the right side of your fabric so that you they fit on there. So like if you were to fold your fabric in half and pin it on there, and one of, one of them would end up curving the wrong way is what I'm saying to you. So you just need to be careful when you're pinning it on so that everything will match back up to your piece. And so I've just put a pin through this and then we're just gonna use our scissors or if you wanna use a little rotary cutter and your mat, um, they recommend leaving between an eighth and a quarter inch around the edge. So I'm just gonna cut around this just like so and this is a really fun project if you are interested in fussy cutting if you have some cute little prints um, that you want to include or highlight this is a great way to do that so then we just take that pin out and we can put this on here and you can see because of the adhesive it's not going anywhere it sticks to it and it holds it in place now we're gonna use our handy dandy seam ripper for something a little more fun than ripping out seams. Um, I'm actually going to be using the back side of the pointed part. 
Um, so kind of this blunt edge and I'm going to go and I can feel with my fingers and we're just going to start pushing against the edge. Everywhere that there is a laser cut, it's created a dip in this foam board. And so we're actually pushing the fabric into that cut and it's going to hide our seam allowance. So I'm just going to run this gently around and I can just keep working until all of that excess fabric makes its way in there. Isn't that so cool? This is a really great project to sit and work on if you're watching TV or even in the car because you could cut these pieces um, on the go. Well, if, not if you're driving, but you know, if you're in the passenger seat, it's something great to take with you. So you can see how simple that is and how beautiful it looks. There's no raw edges. They're all tucked inside that seam. So I've got one here that I've made it a little bit farther on and I, I want you to see how many fun things you can do. On the first one I showed you, I used one fabric in the center and then just two alternating fabrics on this fun spiral. On this one, I used three fabrics. So I did the blue equally and then I alternated between these two prints. So just think of all the fun things you can do and the fun ways you can lay this out. And then let's, let's make a few more of these so you can see this process a bit more. I have some more of my prints here, so let's decide what we want to use next. Also, look at how cute these little chickens are. They're just the cutest. So adorable. And they've got these fun words. Ah, I love it. I actually think I'm going to use the words for some of these. I'm going to make my points on these green. Oops, if I can get it to peel loose here. There we go. Out of the words. And again, we're just going to pin this on, pin it in place, and because these are straight I actually can just kind of come in with my rotary cutter and I'm just eyeballing, just making sure I keep my fingers out of the way, and just cut that out. And now one little, little hint though, when you have these sharp points, I did go ahead and kind of uh, cut off those points just so I have less bulk in the corners to work with. So I'm going to do that. Just trim those off. Makes it a little faster than doing it with scissors. And then again, we can just sit this right on there. That adhesive holds it in place. And then we're just going to use the back side gently. You don't have to push too hard. I think a little bit at a time is kind of the trick. And then once you get it in the groove there, you can go back. But if you push too hard at the beginning, it can kind of warp your fabric. So you just want to be careful. So we've got that one. And you can see it, is ju it just slides right in there. And it gives you, as your fabric pieces come together, because you've pushed them into that um, foam, it gives you this awesome effect where it looks quilted. It's just really, really cool. So let's get that point. Make sure you can see that. And you can just kind of turn it and just make sure you're getting all of those raw edges tucked inside. So easy. All right, let's do a few more. I would think this too would be a great kids project. Oh my gosh. With supervision, of course, with the scissors. Ab and absolutely. The but yeah, um, my daughter would love this. She would love to sit here and do this with me. And so it's, it's a great way to get kids excited about quilting if you don't feel like they're ready to be at a sewing machine yet. It's a great way to get them playing with fabric and hanging out in your sewing room, which we all love, right? So let's do a few more of these little triangle guys. I think if I'm careful, I can just sit it on there, hold it in place, and slice, and slice. Just watch your fingers, you guys know. We don't want any accidents. There we go. And I'm actually going to go ahead and cut one more of these out. Maybe we can just finish off this little quadrant. There we go. And it's super forgiving because you're tucking all of these raw edges in. You don't really have to worry about cutting it super straight. 
Um, it's just a nice, easy going project. So we're going to sit this one on here, like so. And if you ever feel like here, oh no, it actually does cover. I was going to say, I thought this one was maybe too close to the edge and I was going to have my raw edges too close. You can always lift and see before you start pressing it down to make sure you have plenty of coverage all the way around. Because if you do get off a little bit, it's pretty forgiving. I can actually show you on here where I made a little boo-boo. I don't even know if you can see it. But right here, I didn't notice that I was really close to that edge. And so it actually isn't even tucked in here, but it's pretty forgiving. You just hardly even can see it. Can you see that on there, Isaac? Right there. But you would never notice if I didn't point it out. So don't fret too much. <laughs> Did I move it too quick? Okay, awesome. All right, and so let's just do this again, just so you guys can see how easy this is. You can feel gently with the backside of your um, seam ripper and it just slides the fabric right into that groove. Look at that. It's like butter. Had to say that, you know? You know? All right. Is it too sticky that if you laid it down and didn't want it there, can you pull the fabric back Absolutely. up? Absolutely, I'll show you that on this next one. That's a great question. All right, so then let's do that one so I can show you guys, because I've got one more ready. So let's say we put it down and I'm not paying attention, and then I can see here, this is too, too close to this edge and I don't have it all the way covered. So it is really easy to just peel that right back up and then replace it, and the sticky still stays. You don't have to worry about that. So it holds that right in place, and then you just come and press that all in. So simple. And so I, like I said, I used a charm pack for this, and the charm pack work worked great for all of these inside pieces. Let me finish this up here, get this little corner in. But these outside pieces here, you will need um, some yardage or background fabric that you have in your stash just because it's uh, larger than will fit a charm pack. So let's actually cut one of those out. I've got some of that here. Just brought some extra. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna use gray on this one, cause why not? And then I can put white in those spots. <laughs> so I've got some gray yardage here that I just brought from my stash. And actually, let's give this a little press so we don't have wrinkles. go a little better and then we can peel this piece off and we'll just pin this on here where did I put my pin Oop, I heard it there it is <laughs> all right we can just pin this on here and then use our scissors to cut this out I would think another good thing about these, if you found one in a quilt block pattern that you're planning to make a quilt out of, oh, it'd be a great way to do a mock-up block and oh, play with fabric placement to see idea. what you want to do. I love that, Court. That's an awesome idea. All right, we can get all of this out of the way and then just double check, make sure we're still good. Yep, and then I'm just gonna cut the selvage off of this side. and then come back and blunt those little corners. I don't know why my phone is buzzing. Every time I tell you. There we go. Just taking a tiny bit off these little corners, like I said, just to get rid of that bulk. And then we can take this back over here and drop this in just like so and like I said on this one you probably do want to check and make sure you've got all your edges covered I'm actually gonna reposition this just slightly so my seam allowance is a little more even there we go and then same thing you just come in here find that little notch and gently roll that fabric into it. This is not the greatest thing. It's so easy.
with these longer ones. Sometimes you do want to alternate. If it gets to where it's warping, this one's laying really nicely, but it can kind of pull if you press too hard. And then so you can kind of alternate from side to side just to make and press a little, little section at a time to make sure your fabric stays nice and flat. All right, any questions or anything, Court? Um, it looks like you didn't have to. I know sometimes when you work with curves, you need to clip that curve, but that went in there just very in, nicely without yeah, doing that. Yeah, it went in beautifully. I didn't have to clip any curves when I did mine. Um, okay, let me just finish getting this in, and then we can talk about the little border edge. There we go. Back to this outside edge. It's honestly just so relaxing and fun. Like I could just sit here and kind of zone out and make this fun little project. So you can see how that's starting to come together. And then you're gonna get out here to your outer border. And this part um, is done a little bit differently. I don't know if you can see here, you have, just like you do on a quilt, your border that goes on first and your border that goes on second. So these are your inside and outside border pieces. And so you're gonna do the inside ones first. It just makes it a little bit easier. So let's try and demo that. Pull this all the way off. And you're gonna to wanna to use two and a half inch strips for your border. And so I've got some of those here and they actually recommend, oops, let me find my little ruler. There it is. They actually recommend um, leaving a quarter inch overhang on your side here. So I'm not even gonna cut this yet. I'm just going to lay this on here and kind of eyeball that quarter inch and make sure I'm over the edge, just like so. And I can just lay that on and again, that adhesive holds it in place, which makes it really easy for me to come back. Again, look for that quarter inch and just trim it off. If you are worried about it, you absolutely could measure and cut this. It says exactly what to cut it to in the instructions. I'm just kind of free spirited, so this is how I like to do it. Um, and so then again, you're gonna start by doing that long strip and pressing that in. We had a customer say her and she and her granddaughter used the purple thing the, to I, press in as I well. I used the purple thing, but I don't know if I was just pressing too hard, um, but I had to be more careful with the purple thing because it wanted to bend than with oh. my seam ripper. So for me, a seam ripper worked better, but the purple thing does work great if you're not just like really digging in. For me, I found this to be easier because I can just glide it right along that edge. But if you're working with quit, with kids, the purple thing is probably a safer bet because you're not dealing with the, the sharpness of our seam rippers. And so then now, just like before, we're to that corner. And so I'm gonna work this in here, just like so. And again, on this side, I'm just gonna get all that bulk tucked away and then now let's look at this back side. You can see here the fabric is naturally wanting to like fold because of that quarter inch overlap that we had. And so we're just going to kind of finger press and use a lapel stick or a Elmer's glue stick, whatever you have uh, lying around or, or if you have like a craft glue that you prefer. And you're just going to pull this around nice and tight and you're going to run glue right along that edge and glue it in place. And you can see here on this one, that's what we've done. And we did the same thing all the way around it. It's glued in place. And then you just pull your corners when you do the other side. And then like I mentioned, they include this, um, it's either a foam or I think sometimes there's like a cardboard backer board that they include. Some have foam, some have cardboard. And then you would just glue this in place and it will just clean up the whole back and you've got this great finished project. It's super cute, and they have lots of different designs available and different sizes, so let me show you some of these different ones. 
So this one I think is such a cute pattern. And it even has some skill levels in here, but I think all of these are beginner. Yeah, they're all beginner. I mean, how could they not be? You're literally just cutting and, and uh, using your seam ripper to push it in there. So pretty straightforward. So this one's so cute. I love this pattern and I love this size. It's a great little gift item. They've got a sunflower, a little witch's hat, sea turtle, um, a little bumblebee, and this rooster, lots of different shapes. And all of these different um, patterns are available on our website. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully it will be a relaxing no-sew project for you. Um, again, the fabric that we use is called Backyard Blooms by Allison Harris for Wyndham, which is just darling. Um, and it, it's interesting because it looks, this is all the same collection, but I just pulled different colors from it and you get a really different look. So super fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you have a fabulous week and we'll see you next time.